Hello, everyone. Let's get started with a short survey. I'll give you some like story, a background story. So imagine that you are the CEO of a new startup. You want to create a new uh, innovative AI product in the commerce market. And the product needs to be data-driven, continuously learning, and production ready. You have the budget to hire 18 people. Some of them will be data scientists. Some will be engineers. When I say engineers, I mean uh, data, ML, ML ops, and everything, infrastructure, everything in this area. So given this scenario, how many would you recruit from each uh, group? So any votes for 50-50? More engineers? More data, oh, spoilers. More data scientists? Fair enough. Uh, all engineers? All data scientists? So let me introduce myself. So my name is Shahar. And my passion for pipelines started back in the days when I uh, worked and studied uh, mechanical engineering. I was in this field for uh, six years, and then I realized that data pipelines are more interesting than stainless steel pipelines. So right after uh, graduating my master's degree in 2020, I joined a new innovative uh, AI team in uh, NCR as MLOps engineer. And I've been mainly working on building the um, framework which I'll uh, talk about today. So by the end of 2022, after making some progress with our platform, my manager tackled me with a very annoying issue that we had back then in our, our Airflow setup. So the time passed, nobody fixed it, and then I uh, recalled, hey, Airflow is an open source, right? I could fix it. So then I uh, joined the open source community and GitHub and started contributing. Uh, in GitHub, I've been mainly active uh, within the GCP provider area, but I also contributed to the DevTools and the CI/CD. Two months ago, I was invited by uh, the PMC to become a, a committer, and I gladly accepted the invitation. So I also started reviewing pull requests and participate, and now I participate in Airflow 3 development efforts. And that's about me, uh, more or less. Uh, by the way, the issue is still open if you want to, if, if you want to tell review it, so uh, you're welcome. But now I represent my corporation, so I'll leave the open source hat for another time. So, NCR Voix, let's get started with some numbers and facts. So, leader global uh, provider of digital commerce solutions for retail, restaurants, and digital uh, banking industries. Over 100 years of experience, uh, headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. We are located in 35 countries across the globe, and we have 16,000 employees, some numbers. So for those of you who've heard about NCR in the past and wondered where this voice came from, let me clear it up. Until last October, NCR was one company uh, handling both commerce solutions and ATM machines. Last October, uh, we split into two independent companies, so NCR Voix, uh, to which I uh, belong, and we handle the commerce solutions as NCR Atlios handles uh, the rest, and they are out of the scope of this presentation. Here are some of our products. So we produce point of sales, hardware, software, eventually used by cashiers uh, in the retail shops, and we also produce self-checkout self terminals. And finally, we have NCR Voix Insight, which includes BI and AI solutions for the terminals. So here are some examples for the AI solutions that uh, uh, my team provides. So we have a product of fraud detection where we flag uh, risky cashiers and transactions. We have sales forecasting where we predict uh, future sales for revenue optimizations and we display the results of these two products to, retail, to the retail managers on dedicated dashboards. And finally, we have, uh, not finally, we have more, but we have AI on point of sales when we provide AI-based services to the cashiers and to retail managers on their uh, point of sales. Um, most of our products are transaction-based and utilize machine learning models, but we also started working with LMs, and uh, we have more interesting stuff that we are currently working on. So this is our stack. Let me go quickly. Uh, through the cycle. So for the model development, we use the PyData tools, uh, scikit-learn, NumPy, and Pandas. We're, in some cases, we use a, a Apache Beam, mostly for streaming and large-scale models. For operations, we use a, a GitOps methodology. We use GitHub and GitHub Actions. And starting this point, and at this point, we have uh, 
deployed DAGs, which operates on the Cloud Composer, and then uh, it schedules all the other uh, cloud services. So GCP is our uh, cloud provider, as you could see. So we have Cloud Composer for orchestration. We use Dataflow and Vertex AI for computing. BigQuery as, the, as our data warehouse, and we visual and for products that need visualization, we use uh, Looker. So I assume that not all of you are familiar with machine learning pipelines, so I'll provide a very simplified high-level architecture of one type, which is a batch uh, training machine learning pipeline. So it starts with the data, which comes from the point, uh, uh, points of sales, and uh, it's streamed using a data flow uh, service to our uh, training pipeline. Uh, so it, it saves the data on, on BigQuery, and from BigQuery, we uh, do the rest. So uh, from BigQuery, it uh, arrives a data flow, then it goes through the steps of data collection, like it collects the data from BigQuery. We have data pre-processing, feature engineering, and thus we have a ready uh, data set for training. We train our models uh, using Vertex AI, and uh, we save uh, the results on the cloud storage, Hopefully, we could utilize other features of uh, Vertex AI. I'd like to emphasize that this is a simplified version of the training pipeline. There are other important aspects that uh, uh, we need to take care of, such as cross-validation, train test validation sets, et cetera, but out, they are out of the scope. And of course, there are other types of pipelines, for example, uh, batch inference pipelines, where you take the model and part of the inference, you also take the data from BigQuery, that you do the processing steps and then you infer the results. Usually we do it within a data flow. So this is more or less. Uh, sometimes we use different uh, services for other cases. Uh, I'll cover it uh, a bit later. So now that we understand the high level architecture of our machine learning pipelines and the cloud services that we use for their uh, different parts, uh, let's say the actual problems that my team tries to resolve and we have four of them. So let's start with the first problem, uh, which I titled uh, Continuous Inference and Training. So when uh, dealing with uh, machine learning problems, we uh, usually go through this machine learning life cycle. So it always starts with uh, the data. We need to collect it, validate it, see that it's okay. Uh, then uh, our data scientists uh, explore some uh, models to train it on. They train, make some experimentation. They and eventually, they can, after some evaluation steps, they come up with a good enough model that we could you know, move to the production. So then our developers come, our engineers, and then they build a production suitable uh, build. And as part of the operations, we release it, deploy it, monitor it, and so on. And at some point, we will see that uh, the performance uh, degrades, so the performance uh, gets worse, and so we will need to collect more data, retrain the model, and the cycle, the cycle continues. Now, so uh, in the batch pipelines like the one I've showed you, we would usually like to train and infer our models for new data on a frequent basis. It could be once a day, once a week, once a month, and so on. So we could use this simple cron job or sand clock that you see here for uh, uh, orchestra setting, but it has some limitations. So what if there is no new data at all? For example, when the shop closes, we would just waste computational resources and costs. Uh, how can we ensure uh, rerunning fail jobs when possible and alert if we encounter any further issues? And also, what if our orchestration logic is complex, for example, we want to train our model, and according to the evaluation results, we want to deploy to production, and it, like, if it's okay, if it's not, we want to you know, skip. So that's one problem, and you could probably guess what a great orchestration firmware could solve this issue. So take the entire circle and each pipeline that I just show you and multiply it by the number of the customers. So not only that, you probably want to make some customizations as customers vary in requirements and size. So for example, think of a hypermarket like Walmart and compare it to the local grocery shop. Both will require different computational resources, CPU or memory, for running the same pipelines. On the top of it, 
imagine that uh, you have not only one product, you have uh, three, uh, like one, the ones I showed you, or more. So each, of, each one of these products will have, have their own pipelines. So there are two uh, related challenges that uh, we need to deal with. So similar pipelines in different products will probably reuse the same structure, utilities, and assets, such as SQL queries, customized machine uh, learning models, and this gets to the point that how can we assure production-ready pipelines while re retaining code maintainability? So that's one challenge. The other one is there might be some products that utilize different cloud services for the same tasks depending on the technical or business requirements. So at some point, our product team could say, hey, we need to turn this batch pipeline into a streaming pipeline and then we'll need to adjust our workflows for that. So how could we allow interchanging cloud services without you know, much effort? So as the fourth and the most difficult problem is the diverse programming backgrounds. So until now I've talked about the customers, but let's talk now about you know, the people that develop these pipelines. So in a company of 16,000 employees, you'd expect that many teams would like to take part in the development of AI models because you know, AI, AI is the next new hot thing. And, but we should recall that each team comes from a different programming uh, background. So if each team needs to deliver an AI product, uh, so would they have to you know, create their own deployment method? And not, we, we wouldn't like that because, you know, it could create a, a, a large variance between, uh, between teams and we will have some maintenance issues. So for that matter, uh, some teams don't even know what Airflow is or that we could use it for deployment. So to streamline the development of AI models within the company, we'd like to have a standard a framework that would allow easy deployment to production so other teams won't need to be worried of the technical aspects of delivering AI products. So this sums up our uh, problems and the question is, okay, how are we going to make it work all together? So let me introduce our solution to all of these problems to which we call Streamliner, the NCR Voix uh, MLOps platform. So uh, we've been using it for uh, the products that I showed you and additional uh, products which I didn't cover and been developing uh, you know, it since, the, since uh, we started the work in our team and so far it works good. So let me take you through a high level overview of the solution. So we have machine learning pipeline which is written in uh, Python, it's not it's not an Airflow DAG, but it's a structured file that could be converted into DAG, as I'll show you later. And also we have a customer config. We have many of them for each uh, pipeline that contains the uh, configuration for each. So as for what comes next, we combine both uh, all, all of the configurations and, and the pipeline and using the CI, CD, and GitHub actions, we generate uh, Airflow DAG files, and for that we use uh, Jinja templates. We build and push Docker uh, images that are suitable to run on each of the cloud services that we utilize, and we save the images on the artifact registry. And after having both, we upload the DAG to the DAX folder, and then, we, and then it gets synchronized uh, with the Airflow and Cloud Composer, and then it syncs out DAGs, and start running them uh, occasionally. So previously I showed you four problems. I'll now elaborate how our solution solves each. So let's start with the first problem, continuous inference and training. Uh, so as you probably guessed, Airflow is our key component in our solution and there are good reasons for that. It's easy for use and integration as you could call it a backend. So having DAGs as Python files, we have uh, the user-friendly interfaces, graphical and the command line. So everything made it easier for the engineers to create a Python-based framework that could integrate right into it. It also provides us with a variety of options for orchestrating uh, our pipelines to work continuously. We could utilize the different Airflow operators to determine if there is enough data to infer and train our models before we do so, and this saves a lot of uh, computational resources, thus money. 
We could also retry fail jobs uh, conditionally and set up alerts if anything goes wrong. And uh, we could uh, determine how frequently we want to re retrain our models for each customer individually. And I think this uh, you know, makes us special from other AI team. And we could uh, ensure that they are deployed to production if and only if they validate better, better than the current one, the current model. So this is a real screenshot for, from an inference model, uh, for an uh, inference DAG. So you see all the, we, that we skip the runs when the shop closes in, in this case. Ignore the, the time, it's in another time zone, but uh, just to, to illustrate uh, what it's like and imagine that there is something like that for all of uh, our, uh, our customers that you let utilize this pipeline. So our DAGs are generated programmatically, one for each product and tenant, and you'll see it in the next slides. So to deal, to deal with the multiple uh, customers, we create customers con customized configurations in YAML format. So for uh, smaller tenants, we could uh, set, sorry, for, we, we set the, the cloud resources here. So for small tenants, it could look like this. For bigger, it could uh, look like this. And then we inject these values to the DAGs and, they, and this is how they operate, how they configure the cloud services. And yeah, so this is the configurations. Now let me elaborate a bit about our Streamliner uh, framework. So to deal with multiple products per customer, we've created this framework which provides us with the following uh, features. It provides some generic uh, templates for different types of pipelines. It lets us create new pipelines quickly, and if for some reason there are requirements to change the type of pipeline uh, from batch to streaming, experiments, or so on, it's a matter basically of changing a setting uh, within the uh, Python file. And our pipelines are, are modular, and it means that they could be easily customized, and they support a simple pipeline structure, so if we eventually convert it into DAGs, it will be a linear DAG, but we also uh, support a more uh, complex stru structure like with branches and so on. And we also pr uh, provide reusable assets that could be utilized by each pipeline. We have deployment utilities like the GitHub Actions workflows that I talked about for building the Docker images, deploying the DAGs, et cetera. And we have these uh, building blocks which could be utilized by any pipelines and make them runnable on any execution environment. So let's see what it means. So in the Streamline framework, for example, we have this BigQuery data provider, uh, which helps, uh, we, and in the pipelines, we use it for uh, you know, reading, reading data from BigQuery. Uh, and this, this one could be run on uh, any cloud service says it could run on Dataflow, Vertex AI in their suitable format, and we could, for small amount of data, we could also run it on Airflow, on Cloud Composer. And within the project that utilizes it, it it's simply a matter of uh, defining, uh, in this case, the query as a function that returns a string, and BigQuery Data Provider from the Streamline framework takes care of everything uh, behind the scenes. So this is how our standard pipeline structure looks like, and it solves uh, our issue with uh, the diverse programming backgrounds, because if we have you know, one standard pipeline uh, then it makes uh, life easier for everyone. So using the Streamliner framework, we could run this pipeline in three execution modes. We could run it locally, we could deploy it as an Airflow DAG, and when the DAG schedules the containerized services, then it utilizes the same file for running its uh, logic. So just to show you what it looks like, so imagine that you have a pipeline that looks like this, two steps on Dataflow, one step on Vertex AI, then using our uh, parser uh, and Jinja templates and injecting the, the data from the customer config, um, we create uh, the DAG file like this. And the cool thing is that when we later want to schedule the uh, containerized services, then it uses the same pipeline within the Docker image to run the relevant logic on the relevant service. So it's very reusable and makes life easier. So to wrap it up, I'll go through the streamliner standards for AI pipelines. 
So uh, we want them to be transformable to ensure adaptivity to deal with constant changes in business requirements. We want it to be uh, standardized, so it ensures cons consistency between all of our pipelines. Uh, we want it to be modular, so it enables flexibility in building uh, simple as complex pipelines. Uh, we have reusable and re reliable assets within the streamlined framework, and it improves our code quality and simplifies maintenance. We want it to be scalable, uh, so we could expand our AI services to many customers, small and big, and we want it to be efficient, so we could accelerate our results while maintaining cost performance efficiency. And we could make all of this happening thanks to Airflow. So that's about it. One last word. So if you remember our pie chart from the beginning, so this is how my team operates. We are 11 members in our team, uh, three engineers including me, and eight data scientists. And so far with this uh, framework, everything has been working well. So thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.